We're going to cover how to use the Fantastic Contraption game in this quick tutorial. Uh, you can find a visual version of what everything we're going to cover on the module if you prefer to do it that way, or you can watch this simple video. To quickly get into it, we press play and all of our levels come up. You can toggle between the two levels by choosing either one of these arrows and just kind of slides back and forth between the two. In order to successfully get to a level, you click on the desired level and it pumps you into the game. Now there's a couple things you want to pay attention to quickly before we begin. Uh, up here at the top you have your toolbars. These are all the individual pieces you're going to be able to use to build your contraption. On the left hand side here you have a plus minus sign. This allows you to zoom in and zoom out of the game. And you'll also notice that every time I roll over top of one of these tools or one of these buttons, the description here at the top changes. So real quick, we're just going to run through this and how to use the game. We have a problem to solve. We have to get our pink object here into our pink goal zone here. We have to do this by building something to drag, push, pull, or throw this from here to here. Now this is a pretty simplistic level. Uh, we have to move from left hand, left hand side of the screen to the right. We click on the yellow or orange balls that turn clockwise. This allows us to move from left to right. Uh, pink allows us to move from right to left. Blue doesn't move at all. And we have these two arms, water and wood. Now the difference between the two is water allows things to pass through it. Wood does not. In this simple design, it doesn't matter which one we choose. We just got to connect them up. And I will notice that I've connected from center of one object to the center of the other object. This is important because if you don't do that, and I'll delete it here to show you what I mean, if you don't connect up from the center of one to the center of the other, they're not going to spin. The whole idea is this thing is going to spin into the goal zone. Now, I've tested it. It didn't work. I click stop. It returns to its original position. Now, watch what happens when I connect up from the center of the one we want to spin to the non-center of another one. It still spins. It's a little awkward, but it still spins. Whichever wheels you want to move or rotate, you have to connect up from the center of them to another object in order to kind of give them power. Without power, it's, it's not going to work. So let's go ahead and try something different here. Let's go from the center of one to the center of the other. See if we can't make this thing spin. It starts to move, and eventually we'll get into this little goal zone that says victory. Now when you get to this point, you want to click back and stop. Because it takes you back to your original position and now you can take a screenshot of the contraption you've built. I don't want a screenshot of the victory screen. I want a screenshot of what it is you've built right here. And the way we got to that, after we got to the victory screen, I'll show you again. It hits victory, we hit back, and stop. And it goes back to its original position. Now I will show you this, I want to show you another level here just to kind of give you a better idea of how to go ahead and do this, but in this one the problem is we have to knock this wall down and then climb over top of it. Our object is a square now so it will not spin or rotate as the other one did, so it takes a little bit more thought. I also want to show you you can move this object around inside of this build block, this build zone. Okay, we can't move it out. We can't build anything outside of this. This is your build zone. This is where you have to do everything in here. We cannot go outside of this. And this is going to be important in a later level. You cannot reach anything. You cannot touch anything outside of this build zone. Now, I'm going to move this thing out of the way again. Just so we can kind of start working here. And I'm going to throw some balls down. Now, I don't know if this is going to work. That's not the point. The point is you're supposed to go through the design process and create a prototype, hypothesize, identify problems, and then test. And if it doesn't work the first time, you retest, and you retest, and you retest, until something works. So here's my prototype. I'm going to try it. I'm going to test it, see if it works. It sort of knocks the wall down, and then it kind of folds up on itself here, and it, it's kind of going. Might get there. Okay. It looks like my prototype would actually work. Now we have to figure out a way to secure this object to it so that it will carry across. Remember, it's a square, so it won't roll. So what you want to do is you want to connect this up in some way, shape, or form that it's not going to get in everybody's way. Now everybody can just kind of do this and let it go. 
and it may work, it may not work, it may cause a problem like that and fold up on itself, and that's the problem you're going to find. Just because your object, your thing works the first time does not mean it's going to work every single time after you connect things up. So what we want to do is connect up some more stuff to see if it might actually work a little better. We try it again, and we try it again, and we try it again, and eventually get there. Again, once you hit the victory screen, you click back, and you click stop, because I need to see what it is you've built. Now remember, when we go through the table, it's not enough just to do level and then go back. I need to see the first prototype that I built without this stuff, and then this is my second test to my second redesign. And we'll go over how to fill the table out a little bit later. This ends the short tutorial on how to use the game, and I hope you did well.